On this episode of Initial Relations, Rob and I discuss the recent Clarity 24 event and arranged marriages. Let's go. This is Industry Relations, a podcast that's at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Industry Relations with Rob and Greg. This is your co-host, the notorious Rob. As always with me, the fabulous Greg Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, Rob. Ah, hola. That, I like that. That uh, like Clark Kent move. Like it's a Clark Kent. Yeah. yeah, Clark Kent to Superman. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Again, I'm always doing this about my hair, but God damn, getting gray. Jesus. I mean, well, welcome to old age, man. Like I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it no sucks, but it's, it's better than the alternative. That's what I always say. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm. Off-site right now, I'm actually yep. in the Great Northwest, a little south of Seattle. I'm at my sister's house here, but um, right on. I I did the audio check, so hopefully uh, I don't have my yeah. microphone, but hopefully everybody can hear me oh, okay. You sound but, great. Um, you sound great. Good. But uh, hey, uh, you know we're gonna dive right in because we already missed last week. You know, and yeah, uh, sorry about apologize that, to everyone. Travel life it does get in the way. We probably should have let you know in advance, but uh, we didn't, and that's on us. Uh, we'll probably not On let me. you know the next time it happens because, uh, you know, <laughs> we're just busy people living Wing in those it. businesses. But one of the reasons, of course, is that you're at the annual – is it Clar- – like what do they call it? Is it called Core Logic now? Is it Clarity? No, it's they called it Clar- you know, Core, uh, Clarity 24. Okay. And MLS, M- MLS Executive Workshop I think okay. is the thing. Yeah. But um, we call so, it the Clarity yeah, event. You know, that's what I think. Yeah. You know, it's been going yeah. on for years and years and years. Uh, they do a really great job out there in Scottsdale. Uh, I did not attend because I typically don't attend those, but you did. And I be- did you speak? I didn't speak there, no. Okay. I was. I think I was one of those guys, like, if if uh, something happened to one of the other presenters, they would break right. the glass. Right. And I, right. Would, I would appear from the lobby bar. Right. And I'd, right. you know, jump on a stage. So That's yeah. right. Uh, and I think there were some interesting conversations had, so I figured we'd start with, you know, sort of your review, your travelogue to Scottsdale yes. to attend the yes. Clarity event and then talk about the interesting things that came out of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I've been going to the MLS Executive Workshop for a while. It's, it's usually typically an invite-only kind of thing. Yep. Um, and uh, it was, you know, first started by Greg Larson, of course, at Clarity and Matt Cohen, right? And you know, they used to always, back in the day, they would also do this MLS survey of like mm-hmm. the MLS vendor system surveys. And that would be the end of the show. And like all the vendors would be like, oh, I got a five, not a six or whatever they, kind of thing. Uh, but they, when they got acquired by CoreLogic, they stopped that. So there's, and it's always been held at the uh, Scottsdale Plaza. Um, the thing I think that the, the Clarity event has always had, uh, and I think it's really, <laughs> despite it usually has great content and a, a lot of, uh, you know, good conversations is uh, it's in Scottsdale in, in February. That's right. Um, so I very think, smart. I think very very smart. You know, Greg no Greg and Matt knew what the hell they were doing with that yep. that, that kind of yep. thing there. So um, this year was a little, was different because they moved the venue from um, the Scottsdale Plaza. I'm not sure if it was a venue thing or a dates thing or whatever, but they wanted to go to another hotel, so we were at the Omni and. Um, and, you know, so that was a whole different vibe than the Scottsdale. Scottsdale Plaza, is, it's kind of an older facility or whatever, yep. but um, yep. they have little bungalows and stuff like that. I but, remember, um, yep. Uh, it, it, it was kind of a different thing. So everybody was uh, – one of the staples at the Scottsdale Plaza Lobby Bar was uh, they had a popcorn machine there, and everybody yep. loved the popcorn, and you'd be eating that popcorn. All. And they stopped doing that after the pandemic, but um, still, you always remember that. But um, – what well, what they did is the the production value went way up and the staging was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, something very similar to their user group meeting, which was great. Um, they had some interviews. Um, they had another legal update, which I want to which I want to talk about. Sure. Um, you know, it's like, but it's like nostalgia. I mean, I, I do miss the old days when Greg, you know, Greg was running the thing with with Matt. But um, what I what I will say, uh, Davey over there, um, I can imagine the meetings he had to be in, like. Because it's all the vendors are there and everybody – it's a very inclusive, agnostic yeah. event as Kevin yeah. Green used to call it or calls it. Um, and I, I got to applaud those guys. 
you know, CoreLogic, a big company, they're all competing against each other. But to have everybody there yep. um, still meeting, they're keeping that kind of – trying to keep that Clarity vibe going. Um, uh, you know, big applause to, to, to Clarity for keep doing that. And uh, I think it's a – I don't know how and, long and, they're going to do it for. And but. to CoreLogic for allowing Claire to keep doing that, right? Because that was a very important yeah. part of our little subsector of the business, you know? So yeah, yeah, kudos. Yeah. So, kudos um, all around. Yeah. But uh, so, um, before you, know, you there dive was, into uh, specifics, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. What was the vibe? What was the mood? Right? Because I think this is the first major industry event after NAR November, right? So in other words, like we had Sitzer, we had NAR. You know, we had all the drama out of NAR. I feel like this is the first like major MLS gathering since the big, and then the DOJ, you know, coming in and no select, right? So what was the vibe? What was the overall mood? Um, it was a positive, optimistic mood. I think there was a little bit of a, a more of a, uh, um, you know, and I think we're going to get into this. It's kind of like, okay, now yep. we know what, what we're yep. dealing with, right? We weren't sure before. DOJ's laid it on the table. Mm-hmm. And and everybody's had a chance to, and I think that's what we'll get into here. Sure. Of thinking about okay, and we've had our own quick reactions after because we just we we yeah. recorded like you know hours after that almost. Yeah. Um, and you know it's it's a little bit more of I would say um, a little more defiant, right? Okay. Ooh, so they've okay. been whatever, and I think people are starting to go, okay, well, you know, we understand what you're saying, DOJ, but you know, really. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I think people are getting a little bit more uh, uh, their feet underneath them. Um, so uh, that's Defiant. that's what I felt more optimistic. Defy, I mean, maybe that was like more of the vibe I got from the the uh, legal update. It's like, you okay. know, hey, you can't just you can't just you know tell people how they're supposed to run their business. And you know, if you if you really look into like um, what they were saying was happening in Washington was a complete lie. Um, or, you know, wasn't, you know, not, I wouldn't say lie, but, you know, didn't really tell the whole story. Sure. Um, so there's a little bit of that kind of thing going on there. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm optimistic okay. and, you know, yeah. Okay. So let's start with the legal updates since you mentioned it. Uh, it seems like that's where a lot of the action was, at least for, you know, from your perspective, who gave the legal update and what was the overall? It, it was Ed Zorn and, uh-huh. uh, was it Claude is the other guy's name? Yeah, Claude Cipher. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, and Mitch, Mitch was there okay. as well. Okay. Right. So they kind of did a tag team kind of through there. Right. And, um, the nice thing here is that they gave kind of an update what was going on, but also talked about, um, you know, some solutions, right? So Ed Zorn is now pushing. And I think, um, Mitch is on board with this is this kind of concessions mm-hmm. based, um, thing, which, you know, he what was on our pod, right. Where you sure. can put in the concessions about the, the seller putting these things in there. Yeah, one of the stats he had, and like a lot of people who's been critical of that type of thing is like, well, concessions. I mean, you know, nobody wants to put concessions in this, or you know, Ed was saying that forty uh, percent of of the the listing or the purchase agreements uh, in CRMLS were had concessions in them. So it's not sure. a uh, an unusual thing, right? I mean, it's not the majority, but it's not unusual. So sure. Um, so he was he was touting that pretty heavily, and I think there was. Consensus, consensus on the from the panel that that was a a good strategy here, but they were still pushing back. At like, can you tell a seller what they can do and not do? Right. No. I mean, that's you know, no. Uh, and so I got and, into this debate then, on my blog. Let's stop there real quick, and because I wrote something about what agents should be thinking about, whatever. One of the things I threw in there was, I think that because the DOJ latest card, cards on the table, I said they're going to eliminate compensation field. Right, sellers can offer concessions, but I don't think the agent and the broker will be allowed to assist them to do that. Right, so people are like, "What do you mean? Like you can't do that? Like I have duty of uh, obedience to my seller." Blah blah blah. I'm like, the issue here is steering. The issue has always been steering. The issue is steering. Issue will be steering. Right. So I think concessions were actually going to be fine. But like the DOJ laid out, I think they're only going to allow it during the offer phase. Like you can't pre-signal concessions to the market, to the buyer agent. I think that's going to be the key. So when I say listing agent won't be allowed to, to assist, I meant you can't advertise it in advance. 
right? Now, if the buyer agent calls you and says, hey, I'm thinking about making an offer. Hey, look, my seller is willing to make a concession. I think that's going to be fine because then at least we could say that steering has been minimized, right? Or has been tamped down. I don't know the answer, but that's kind of what I meant by that. So did, you, did they talk about that at all? Like the whole steering element of this? Not really. Um, although I think there's consensus that steering is the issue. I mean, you've been saying this forever, right? Forever. Um, yeah. And it was, it was, it was in their uh, right. SOI thing as, uh, as well. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what I was, why I didn't think the concession thing would work is because in a, in a sense of that was, you know, and I, did we talk about this anchoring kind of thing? I was price anchoring no. I was talking about. Uh-uh. So, I mean, you know, when, you know, with, with software or any product, right. You have, you know, be, good, better, best, right. That kind of thing. Right. And a lot of times what you're trying to do is just drive into the middle. Right. So, right. you know, you're, you're making those two prices to get them to there. There's an, also a thing of anchoring where, well, you know, I'm going to have a conversation with my seller saying, you know, we're probably going to, we're going to need to have probably some uh, offer to, of compensation to the buyer. If we, if a buyer's agent brings us a buyer, you know, it's, yeah, we could be anything you want. You know, it could be 500, sure. it could be whatever, sure. you know, 2%, one and a half percent. But Starbucks when card. they have sure. that, yeah, when they have that conversation and especially if they get it like, a, you know, if they're just going to say a percentage or say an amount, that's kind of an anchor that, okay, now when they talk about our, you know, their own compensation, well, they've, they've set an anchor and expectation like this is going to be this. So um, it behooves them to make that a higher thing so they can say, well, we're going to give the buyer's agent this much. I should I, I at least get that much, right? And, mm, okay. and I think that, that, that still keeps the steering narrative, go, steering narrative going. Of course it that. does. Of course, the so, way, so, so hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's step well, back. Hold on, hold, well, okay, okay, go ahead. You finish and I'll step well, back. Go ahead. Right. Um, and so I just didn't think, you know, this concessions or whatever, they smart agents are going to do this and it's just going to, nothing's going to change as they, as the DOJ has said it, if you keep doing this. Right. And, you know, I talked to some of the attorneys off the stage. I won't say, I mean, I just told you who the names were, but I won't tell you who we're talking to. I'm like, and I, I just laid this out to them. And, uh, the, you know, the, the response was pretty much the, uh, unanimous, like, well, is anchoring illegal? Well, it's not. No, that's true. But I mean, I don't. I just don't. You know, I'm not sure if they they get it that it's the issue is steering and how do we get rid of steering? But at the same time, it's a tricky thing because you can't you can't tell them to do something that's you can't force them to do something. I guess, but but you want the outcome to be this. It's so hard, I think, to to, to, I don't to be so able hard. to kind of do that. I don't okay. think it's that hard. I mean, what, what everyone is leaving out of this whole thing is that every real estate agent is a licensed entity. It's a licensed profession. Steering is a problem. You just condition on the license. You can regulate commercial activity. The FTC can step in and say, all, all, make all kinds of regulations, right? So I don't, I think that, now, what people would bring up is you can't tell the seller yeah, that's unconstitutional. Okay, what nobody like the DOJ is not saying you, the seller can't up make offers, right? What the DOJ is saying is how do we eliminate steering, which simply means that we got to get to a point where the buyer is writing an offer, or the buyer's agent is writing an offer, and then asking for whatever you want in that offer. At that point, it just becomes a one-to-one negotiation. Do you know what I'm saying? What the DOJ right. is concerned about is before you get to that point the buyer agent steering thing. So the stepping back that I had in mind was, okay, you're the listing agent. After all this is done, the next step, you go to your seller and say, hey, we're going to have to have, offer the buyer agent something. Why? How do, as a listing agent, how do you justify that conversation? If the world is, the buyer agent is likely to make, a, or the buyer is likely to make a request for compensation, concession of some kind in the offer. That's the part where I feel like that needs to be explained. Because you can talk about anchoring, like, yeah, anchoring is not illegal. That's all true. The issue is the listing agent telling the seller, "Hey, you're gonna have to offer something to the buyer agent." Like, yeah. was what, what you're thinking on that, or was there any conversation around? Oh that? no, I mean, you know, we were talking ahead. I mean, pre podcast of like an app ideas. You had a wonderful app idea. Oh, thank <laughs> Maybe you. Maybe we'll share it later. Um, but we'll share it at the end. Uh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> um. But what I what what this so reminds me of is a listing presentation, mm-hmm. right? The whole purpose of the listing presentation is you know 
introduce yourself as a professional, you know, present mm-hmm. the CMA or a suggested list price, and then, you know, yep. obviously get the listing, get them to sign yep. on the dotted line. Yep. With this buyer's agreement here, there is a now, there needs to be a product yep. like a listing presentation. It's yep. a buyer's listing presentation where buyer you go through yes. a buying presentation, right? So that you go through the steps of, uh, of like, okay, here's, here's what could happen. Let's say we have one offer that's all cash and no concessions. We have an, another offer that's a contingent once this. You have to show them why. You know, the smart selling agents are going to be, are going to prep their sellers to say, we, we might get some offers where they're going to ask for, and that's I'm, right. let me tell you why that's a good idea. That's because right. Because right. their offer might be the strongest. You know, that's right. you want to get an all cash off and close in 30 days. That's yeah, right. it's going to cost you a point and a half, but, or do you want to wait for this contingency guy or this guy with a lower credit or this, you know, whatever, right? All so, true. Yep. Um, but that needs to be in a package like a cloud CMA. I mean, it, it helped. The page order and the content were all designed to walk the seller through of what that was happening. It needs this. We need that same kind of thing mm-hmm, for a buyer mm-hmm. presentation. Okay. And now instead of the listing agreement, and now it's now because these things have to be more, and everybody agrees on that is the buyer agreement. Oh, here's one thing too um, about that. All of them are total agreement that the buyer's agreements out there are, and you've written on this, yeah. are just ridiculously yeah. Yeah. greedy and just just badass awful yeah. and uh, yeah. it's just yeah that that whole all that's got to need to be blown up i'm also. so glad to hear that like ed zorn cloud cypher and you know, bitch all agree the current oh, no, totally. agreements all need to be redone it's just it's it's so it's so ridiculous it's, it's like so you bad. negotiate with whatever and if well I, hey if they offer me more i'm gonna take that money too it's like dude come yeah. on man yeah yeah you're just yeah. shooting yourself in the foot again yeah Ugh. all right so well, going back to this like okay so and the buyer agency agreement needs to be redone. The buyer presentation is going to be a real interesting thing. Right. So let's assume the agency agreement is going to be fair. Right. It's going to be fair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The buyer agent still now has to go and give the equivalent of a listing presentation. Listing presentation, I've seen, and again, you're the expert on this, so I'll sort of defer to your judgment on it. But a lot of it is here's my track record of performance. Right. In other words, my list to sell ratio is 117%. Like the MLS average is 92%. This is why you want to list with me, right? And I'm going to do this for you. I have drone photography. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, right? Why you want to list with me? What's the equivalent of that for a buyer presentation, do you think? Uh, I've successfully negotiated. You know, I I want to make sure that you're in this kind of environment, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There's a multiple offer situations. I, I've been in the industry for 10 years. I know all the other players in this market. I'm going to make sure your offer gets gets to the front of the line of that because mm-hmm. I have those right. relationships. I have those ties. I have everything else. Um, now you're going to see a little bit different dynamic where it's like this list to sell ratio, you know, because now it's, it's behooves them to go. The there might be a single list to buy. The reverse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, list yeah. to buy ratio yeah. might be a bigger thing. I mean, in this right. market, it's going to be tough to kind of do that. But, um, you know, or it's going to be um, – how many of my offers have gotten accepted? Success right? rate or Versus something. That. Hit rate. Yeah, yeah success yeah, yeah. rate. I mean, so there's a there's a whole again. Maybe I should go back in this business again. Another. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm precluded from doing a CMA for for uh, non compete reasons. A but BMA. A BMA. <laughs> yeah. Um, a new, so th- I think we just invented a new a new category here. New on category, the baby. Yeah. So somebody out there listening to this, please develop that you know thing. Since Greg is foreclosed from doing that, although, was, was your non compete over? <laughs> I'm not going into specific legalities here on the podcast. Um, okay, so given that, like, where's the defiance? I guess is what I'm wondering. Like, I feel like that's what's going to happen. It's it's like. I think my sentiment on the podcast was as an industry, we needed to look ourselves in the mirror, right? And say, this practice has been fuzzy at best. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and, you know, I think the thing I I mentioned on the podcast with you was when I, we all have our non-real estate friends, right? (laughs) Even though we're really in this kind of thing. And I asked every single one of them and they had no idea where the commission was, whatever. Okay. So now, so now, um, now Northwest MLS does their thing. I wonder if I went up to Northwest MLS and I asked people within the last year mm-hmm. if if that changed. 
Do you no. think, you know, with the changes they made, right? We know it didn't. Like the, the freaking the DOJ we, cited. We know that. that. We know that. Yeah. It didn't. I mean, I might be a little hesitant because I, I was um, out to dinner last night with Justin. So, <laughs> I don't wanna, no, he's very adamant that they, you know, they've got a, a good solution too. So, uh, sure. I don't know for sure, but I think I don't. I don't think it's quite far enough, right? Um, but it, the defiance is, is like, okay, well, we understand what you're saying, but you know, there, that's not where this is going to end up. At least you know the lines here. Sure. This wasn't, you know, over here wasn't good the way we used to do it, and then you want us to do it here. Okay, right. respect that. But there has to be some sort of happy middle ground or happy. Yeah whatever so, thing. And I think that's so, the thing there. It's like, they're not just going to roll over here. Right. So here's and that's the vibe I got. Yeah. So, uh, I just got emailed this article. I think fortune just ran a story on it. And I think I saw it on Twitter the other day as well. Uh, the Richmond fed. So that's a federal reserve bank of Richmond. Two of their economists, two of their staff economists released a academic paper. Talk about real estate commissions and you know what they think quote policymakers should do. They're staking out the position that real estate buy side commissions should be all a la carte. Okay, meaning showing is whatever, 50 bucks. Negotiating the contract yeah. is a thousand dollars, whatever it is, right? It should be yeah. a la carte. So going back to your anchoring position, there's a part that wonders maybe the Richmond Fed is staking out like an anchoring position, right? Yeah. Well I think maybe the DOJ statement is just an anchoring uh, no, thing no, as I well, so, right? That, so by moving the Overton window, it makes the DOJ's position now seem like the middle ground. Do you see what I'm saying? So imagine this. The Richmond Fed comes out with this, and they, they just kind of say policymakers. It's not clear who they mean by this. Who are the policy? Like, we've, you know, is it legislators? Yeah. Is it FTC? Who is this? But what they're saying to policymakers is a la carte. So if the anchor position now is something like, just, again, I'm just brainstorming here, is something like the FTC promulgates a rule that says buyer agents must itemize every activity. Again, I, I'm just, I, I agree. Yeah. Like, I see yeah. your face. The, the, the FTC comes out with a rule, real estate brokers must itemize every activity that they do for a buyer and invoice each separately. That would be the a la carte model, right? You know, there's no more of this Flat fee, hourly rate, like none of that, right? Which is what I've been advocating Do these guys for. even live in the real world? I mean, I mean, they're know, fucking regulators, buyers. dude. Of course not. Like they're regulators. I mean, it's the government, you know. Yeah. I'm just saying, there's an interesting point to be made there. Maybe they're doing that as the we know this won't be accepted, but that position makes what the DOJ is suggesting like seem much more, you know much less drastic what what do you think yeah yeah no if you're dictating how i can run my you know you know uh, you know you Talk know about hey, running Mr. Restaurant, business, right? yeah here's the here's your menu uh format that i'm going <laughs> to give you right i mean it's just what the fuck i mean hey, that's man, just but crazy this isn't exactly unknown like I mean, you live in california for kind of out loud like talk about you know nanny state uh, like, motherfuckers like but it wasn't just california like you walk into a restaurant they have to list calories of each menu item yeah. Well, that's the government telling you how to run your business, and yet we all accept it, right? So, yeah, this well, is not going back crazy. Yeah, right? going back to this kind of defiance kind of thing yeah. too is uh, they did a um, an interview with um, Damien. I forget his last name, but the new oh, CEO no, Real of Trump. Real Truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it was Davey that did the interview, and um, good interview and. One of the things that they brought up there, and I thought, and I'm like, why haven't we heard this kind of narrative before? He's from Australia, yeah, right, yeah. And he says, you know, one thing we, we what, what I that he said that um, he hasn't really seen out there is like what a myth the Australian model is, right? Mm -hmm. They always talk about like in Europe they pay two or two and a half percent. He says, well, let me tell you, in Australia it's seventy percent of them are auctions, mm -hmm. right? There's a a, a government transfer fee. Mm -hmm. You have mortgages that reset every two years. Yep. So when you add all this shit up, and I think Zillow was doing a study on this or something, you're not – it's just an apples to oranges comparison to say – Of course. For the DOJ or anybody to say, well, they pay less and those – well, you're not – this is not the same goddamn thing. 
right? If you can lock in a 30 year mortgage here in America, um, for, you know, 30 4. years, 9%, yeah. Yeah. And, and in another place you have to do this and you have no representation from a buyer also. And I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like the whole underpinnings that the whole narrative of, well, commissions need to be lower because they're the, the thing, you know, they're lower everywhere else. Well, that's just, I think, just a very surface level thing for them to kind of getting in everybody's shit. It's not, it's not the same, man. It's not the same. Of and course. I'm like, why hasn't that, why haven't, I don't think that I've really heard a lot of people, you know, say oh, that. About, you know, everyone's been saying that in the industry. I'm just saying, but it's falling on deaf ears. Well, but I mean, anywhere during the kind of what, the lawsuit, you know, catch yeah, mark and all that of shit, course, I don't remember of fucking hearing oh, a dude, lot of that shit. Huge, no, there was a huge like thing because they denied some Australian expert or something. It's, it was – the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter. At this point, here's the thing. I'm saying, you know what? It's time for us as an industry to start living in the reality-based community. Okay, And the reality-based community is we have made all of those arguments for the last three years. It just hasn't gone anywhere. That's all. I mean, so at some point yeah. we have to accept that, right? Yeah. Now we could get we could get conspiracy theory because I do like conspiracy theories, right? But think about what you said about the Australian model: this government transfer tax, this blah blah blah. You know, the mortgage is reset every two years. You have to pay to put your listings online, right? <clears throat> you know, which you don't hear. Right. My thing is, okay, if that happens, who does that benefit? If we have a government transfer tax, we have mortgages that are two years. Who does that benefit? Right benefits the government yeah so if you can drive commissions real estate commissions down from six percent to say two percent but the remaining four percent is taken up by various taxes the government fees, the government mm, mm, mm. i'm mm. just saying like mm. if we want to get like we can get down that road my point is that's all that may all be true it doesn't matter fact is we made yeah. those arguments I mean falling on deaf ears Talking about you can't tell us how to run your business, run our business. That that argument that just doesn't fly when you have to get a government license in order to be in business, right? This is real estate is not a free market, Wild West. Yeah. Let, let's get real about that. So yeah, all of I that mean, is it, out it, the it, fucking it, window. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of, and you're gonna hate this fucking example, but you know, <laughs> of 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 <laughs> you're gonna hate this example, but okay. and like, you know. Unemployment's the lowest it's ever been in a year. The economy is doing well. Inflation has been dropping like a thing. And it just – nobody fucking cares. Nobody wants to give uh, the current sure. administration that credit. And, and, they, and they just have to – they have to accept it. It's like, yeah, these are facts. These are whatever. But people are, for whatever reason, don't want to, don't want to take them. So they have to come up with another narrative I mean, the, to, to go it, on. Yeah, it's yeah, a little just, different because you know, I don't think we're gaslighting – the DOJ, like the way the administration is gaslighting the American people, you know, so there's that <laughs> difference. But I get I get your analogy. I get your general point. OK, all right. So okay. the issue then is, OK, well, as we're thinking about what's next, what 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 do we do next? Right. I'm saying let's start with reality based community. Let's start with the fact that the DOJ and the FTC are going to do what they're going to do. The Richmond Fed paper, I think we have to read that as clear signal by the by our ruling elite betters. Right, that this is the kind Richmond of their, their heads at. What? Richmond, the Richmond, up Richmond. Richmond. There you go. Yeah. Right, and it is what it is. Now, what then happens next? Right, because it's MLS six X. Um, you know, I mean, I heard there was a whole lot of conversation around NAR relationship with MLS. Okay, yeah. I'll talk about that. I got a, yeah, a nice. That's a fascinating about. topic as well. Um, brokerage relationship with NAR. That's a fascinating topic. And I feel like I was asking about sort of the general mood because the MLS execs are in a really funny place, right? Because as uh, you and I both know, because we've been in insiders for so long in this specific subset, there's no love loss between the MLS community and NAR. No, I was on display Any, too a little bit. Right. Anybody wants to come out and bullshit and gaslight me and say, no, no, it's a close relationship. Like, we're no, no, no. Get the fuck out of here. This has been a codependent relationship for as long as I've been in the industry. There's no love lost. And NAR sort of holds onto the MLS like, you know, it's the family jewels because it is. The MLS has been chafing under that oppressive regime by NAR for 
years and years and years, right? So I'm thinking yeah. maybe the defiance is not necessarily to the DOJ or to the whatever. It's to NAR. Like, get off my back. I mean, am I misreading that? Like, give me your thoughts. No, I mean, I mean, so they had a session called, you know, discussing the NAR and MLS relationship, right? And Chris, I'm sorry, Kevin Sears was there. Right. I met him, right? right. Uh, impressed with him. He had a good interview. Um, a lot more straight talk, right? He, he he's, was he's exactly, a good talker. Yeah. He, he was exact. His, his things were like kind of sports analogies. And was like, listen, it was, we lost, right? We got to have another right. game plan. We got to move on and, you know, whatever. We got to just, everybody does their job. Yeah. You know, we, so I, li- I appreciated his kind of message. Um, I also appreciated that, you know, I think it's smart here, although the guy's traveling, you know, he tell, I was talking about his travel schedule and he said some stuff on stage too. But he's got a two, kind of almost like a year and a half term because of the way it worked out. So I think some steady leadership for that amount of time is actually going to be good for all this stuff. Sure. We'll see what happens. Um, but, uh, you know, they were really, you know, it was Tim Dane and Art and I think he got conned into getting up there in the last minute was on the, on the stage for this. And Brian, um, and they they were kind of dancing around the edges, and then Tim just kind of you know went out and said it. And I think Andrea reported like, you know, we need to like break apart this the, the NAR from the MLS, right? Just that is just not actually what he said. Supposedly, I well, recorded a podcast with Tim on my notorious podcast. Okay, channel, what what, it, what what because that's what Andrea was putting on Twitter, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah. So. I, I don't want to. I don't want to steal the okay. thunder. But basically, his thing was it wasn't really that they, we need to break up. It was that the the rule was in the wrong place. That the linkage between MLS and association should be an association rule, not an MLS rule. It's well, a yeah, his statement. Was, his, 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 there was that a was lot not of, how it was perceived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's another thing that was hilarious, and uh, this is, has to do with you and I. Yeah is one of the things he leveled out there is says, and this was exactly on, on the thing that you reported about where the, the funds run now back in 2019. And, and right. Tim said something to the effect of like, you know, one thing that I really would appreciate is that if I would hear news like that, instead of, you know, two, po- two podcasters <laughs> robbing Greg, I have to learn about this and not from freaking NAR, right? And that got a kind of a laugh at the crowd. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> the crowd kind of bowing down a little bit. So yeah, two hey, yokels are out there giving the news out before they even hear it officially from them, right? Let me put it. Let me put this out there officially. If NAR PR would like to come on this show at any time to break news, we are like, anytime. Let us know. Yeah, but you do have Absolutely. to appear because we're not going to read your goddamn press releases that are written by <laughs> your incompetent fucking fools, <laughs> like. Send us somebody good like Kevin Sears. He's he's actually pretty good. I I like him. I yeah, liked yeah. Tracy. I thought Tracy was very good too. Um, but in any event, um, okay. So divorce. What what do you think? Yeah, is it man. Marriage I don't counseling? Know. Is this like a trial separation? Like, what are we looking at here? Is this divorce? Is I this mean, separation? You, is this it's, it's, marriage? It's so counseling? classic. I mean, you're saying the word divorce, and again, a topic. Six, seven I've been years ago. Since 2017, <laughs> yo. <laughs> Man, you um, remember that presentation at uh, Las Vegas? Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. My one and only, I think. Like, because <laughs> they're like, never inviting <laughs> that guy back here again. You know, but like I said, this is a codependent relationship. Like, this is bad. You need to divorce for both of your sakes. Yeah. Right? I mean, um, yeah. What, what's I your mean, vibe? The, Something's got something's got to give, right? Um, I think the fact that you know these things just take so much time to go through the court systems, it's going to give everybody a bit more. Um, I think that favors NAR, where they just keep the status quo because it just kind of drones on, right? Um, I know MLSs have, have been having meeting about how can we break up uh, and do that, but I think a lot of them are discovering it's just. They're so intertwined in different places, it's almost impossible to do that. So mm-hmm. I think that by those things alone, it just becomes like a, a non-starter. So, um, <sighs> so, so I don't know loveless, how you change that, though. A loveless marriage. A loveless marriage. A loveless marriage, yeah. 
of convenience. Staying yeah. together for the kids. For the kids. Right. <laughs> We're staying together for the listings, right? Right. And, and they're both <laughs> cheating on each other like crazy. I mean, God, oh, that's, that's an awful marriage. Needs to, needs to dissolve. Oh, man. Or it, it is. Some really good counselors. I don't, I don't know. You know. <laughs> yeah, come on the show, man. Come on the show. We'll, we'll be those marriage counselors for you. <laughs> okay. When you say this, what do you... How do you feel? What, how does that make you feel, NAR? How does that make you feel? Have you ever been through marriage counseling? Uh, a couple times, yeah. Yeah, okay. I I have, and I thought it was the most useless fucking thing I've ever been through. <laughs> it's just my opinion, think, like it, from my experience, right? It's like, yeah, like the counseling the that, that I've always received has been to me. They've been they just kind of knock you back in the right direction. Okay, right. That's that, I've not I've never sat through whatever, but it's like okay. Just knock us back on there yeah. and give us some tools and knock us back. On there. Yeah. Okay. We're good now. Right. I, mean, well, I, as, I love as a, those are the yeah. kind of things as, as a, you know, divorce, like I went through that during my whatever. And it's like, this is completely useless. We should save the money and just <laughs> immediately file for divorce. That's where I came up with a seven year marriage and all that. I'm like marriage counseling should happen before the marriage, you know, but that's a whole separate Which goes topic. Back to a whole, <laughs> your app idea. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Any other before we dive into the app idea? Any other what what other takeaways for, were there for you? Clarity? No, um, it's just good to see. It. I mean, like you said, it was a, a good to see a gathering of everybody there. Um, but you know that that defiance kind of was in different places. The the two the Australian myth, um, the uh, you know the DOJ's thing about you know what they wanted to see happen. Um, so I think I think like you know to me the battle lines are kind of drawn now. Right. So everybody okay. now now reorganizes around what what's what what's the next steps here, uh, and uh, you know and there's been some other things you know like uh, Berkshire Hathaway was added to something, so it's obvious they really want to go to Warren Buffett's wallet you know, directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Howard Hanna was dismissed. Who else was this? Berkshire Hathaway or the, the yeah? The, I guess I was a yeah. little bit older. Uh, out of that. Um, and then I guess the next big thing is like, are they going to merge all these things, right? Is that of the, course they are. Yeah. the thing we're waiting for? Uh, yeah. Of course they are. I've already predicted that, but I'm not real clear. Like, did they talk about MDL, the multi district litigation at all? Did it, anybody give a real update I don't to think explain so. what that is? I don't think so. Because no. I think there's this myth that like MDL means that it's one single case and that MLSs and brokers who have not yet been sued can just use MDL to reach a settlement. I don't. Really think that's how I think MDL they works. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's not like I think it's like you're not we're not out of the the woods yet yeah. on any of this yeah. stuff, right? It's not a single case is the most important thing, right? It's yeah. just a single judge basically to deal with the pre-trial stuff, but it doesn't mean that all of the underlying cases and the whole point behind it is use MDL and some of these like flagship cases, right, to kind of clearly signal to everybody else. Here's how your case is going to go, so you might as well settle, right? But I don't think it's yeah. one national settlement. That's that's, or maybe I'm wrong, and that's why I was curious if you know, one of the three illustrious legal beagles had any explanation. I don't, rem- I don't remember exactly. I mean, it's been a little bit, yeah, a, a bit of time since then. But uh, yeah, you didn't, you, you, you know, the 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 bankrupt word, you know, the BK word was. Is is being used more liberally now? Oh, hey, I think hey, oh. <laughs> um, as a strategy. I think we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, you know, I, I just as we've been saying forever. I mean, it's just in the best interest for NAR to settle. But they won't. You know, they don't want to settle unless it's going to. They don't have to yeah. worry about this again. So we'll yeah. have to see what happens there. Um, there were other questions about like um, a, a new administration. Would that matter? No, it's not going to matter if a new, new administrator comes in. Probably These are court not. cases that are, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah but I mean, it's just like, NFT settle, 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 settle. But I don't think yeah. the new administration, like, I don't think Trump is going to make a difference. I think if you wanted to make a difference, it would need to have been Ramaswamy. Or you and I have talked about that, right? Yeah. Because Trump is not going to smash the government the way that Ramaswamy wants to, wanted to smash the government. Yeah, maybe RFA. Well, he was, he was just. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's all budgetary, right? I mean you're you're going right, right at the heart of the issue of these Correct. these departments. And... Correct. Uh, but I don't necessarily see that happening. So, all right. Well, that's uh, thanks to the report. Um, and as promised, we're going to close this episode out with 
the greatest app idea I think I've ever come up with. <laughs> Besides the BMA, right? Okay. Besides the BMA. That's more than an app. That is a whole platform. That what I'm describing is just a simple app. Okay. And I'm saying this publicly in the hopes that someone out there might actually make this because I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Greg, you, you might make it, you know, like this has zero conflict. I mean, I like your, the idea. I like the idea. You know? I, I like the idea. All right. So maybe we should collaborate and, uh, you know, make this happen. And if anybody wants to help Greg and I build this app, let us know. Okay. Well, let's hear the, ele let's hear okay. the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch is it's Tinder for parents. Okay. It's a dating app that is going to attempt to bring elements of the arranged marriage culture that is very much still in place throughout Asia to the U.S. So what do I mean? Here's how it works. Okay. Parents would upload their children's profile. Okay. And then the parents get to swipe on the profiles. And when there's a match, the connection is between the parents. The kids aren't involved in this at all, right? And then the parents decide, you know what? I think like my son should meet your daughter for coffee. <laughs> now, instead of pictures, do you use like CVs or resumes? Use <laughs> all of it. Use all of it because it's their parents. So, you know, like I'll, okay, right, I'll, right, see, right. I'll see all the photos. And I think America's ready for this product now. Now, I know you agree. I'd, I'd love to hear from anyone who disagrees. Hey, listen, but... I, I, if I could help choose who's going to marry my daughter, absolutely. Right? <laughs> right? I think absolutely, it makes so much yeah. sense. Plus, here's the thing. I, this is why arranged marriages have a better track record than, than the U.S., okay? Because I think parents know their kids way better than kids know themselves, especially when they're young. So they're like 21, 22, like, no, 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 son, you're, you're actually kind of lazy. <laughs> you need a woman <laughs> who's actually going to be like into taking care of you versus, you know, hey, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're kind of a stickler about this. You're going to need a man who's going to be down with that, right? I think parents know their kids better. So we're going to have a much better time talking to other parents. Hey, this is what my son's like. This is what my daughter's like. Do we see a fit? So, right. so in, in your vision of that, to the, the yeah. parents have their own conversations first, yes, and then, and then based upon that yes. conversation, they, they say yes. Let's like arrange it. Right. And, and you're saying also because I was asking, yes. this isn't like a private thing where they don't where they say, oh, you know, I happen to meet somebody and I think no. you should talk to their daughter. Yeah. This should be all transparent. I, like I think the kids. Should I don't be think involved. Tinder's the right. I don't think Tinder is the right thing. It's like an e-harmony. Like, well, sure, for, sure, sure. Yeah. 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 Tinder, Tinder is, is that, just the most, it's more of a yeah. transactional, a transactional right, right. thing. Tinder right? is just about yeah. getting laid. No, this is not that. This is like <laughs> trying to get married, right? Trying to marry your children off. And I think the benefit to this is this, right? Number one, if, if you're a kid, because my mom did set me up on one date, right? In my entire Oh, life. right on. Okay. I, yeah, I really yeah. went to her and said, wait, I'm Korean. Like, why aren't you setting me up on these arranged marriage dates type things. So she set me up on one. It was the worst date I've ever been on, but it was hilarious. And I was like, I want more, you know, but she never hooked it up. I want everybody to imagine Rob Hahn on a blind date. Okay. Just, I'll do just it. everybody it was... put that in their head. What, what that poor girl. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? Poor girl, poor me. I show up on the date. I'm, so, so, okay. I, this is when I was still in law school and I was a pretty lefty guy in law school. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, well, way more left than you. I would condemn you as when I was in law school. Okay. The girl shows up. She's a literal communist. <laughs> and she starts criticizing me because I want to be a lawyer <laughs> serving the capitalist, uh, you know, whatever. Oh, regime. Right. So at one point, literally in our first date, one point, my, one of my questions to her was, do you have a bank account? Because if you do, I got news for you. <laughs> Your money is going to serve the capitalist regime. So, you know, maybe it cut out the condemnation. Oh, man. The fly so, in the wall for, for that thing would have been for fantastic. Me. Not for her. For me. Okay. But anyway. Um, there's another podcast. There's another idea there. Podcast, just audio of first dates. <laughs> 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 a lot of them would be really boring, though. A lot of them would be really boring. Um, so if you're interested, we'll call I don't know, eHarmony for parents. I think this thing will sell like hotcakes. Yeah. Oh, so, so the first I... thing is that, right? So parents know their kids. The second thing, and this is important, 
if you meet a girl on your own, right? And at least this was the way it was for me when I was 25, 26, right? You just go out to a party, you meet a girl, you're just thinking hook up, right? Like it's just casual. If you're if you're being sent on a date that your parents picked, yeah, it's there's an implied emphasis, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think even the first date, look, it's no commitment. It's just me for coffee. See if you like each other. You're still walking, and both parties are kind of walking in. Our parents kind of like each other. Our parents thought this was a good idea. It would be a different set of expectations, which I think leads to a healthier dating culture. Well, I was surprised that you, you, you were telling me that um, that arranged marriages are more successful. Far more successful. But then after thinking about it, it's like, you know, so rando that, you know, people, you know, uh, first time I met my parents, my, my you know, Your I really yeah. hadn't met, you know, right. in-laws until, right. you know, very close to the wedding or something. It's just kind of insane right. in a way, right? Right. And yeah. that's one of the advantages of remarriage. marriage. Like the in-laws, they already like each other. Right. Yeah. So anyway, that's my idea. A bonus I love content I love for it. this. Right? Hey, man. Let's, <laughs> if you are interested in helping Greg and me make uh, eHarmony for parents, I'll come up yeah. with a good name. Okay? I'll yeah, come up yeah, with a good name. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, matchmaker. Whatever. We'll come up with a good name. If you're interested in helping well, us Isn't there a this, name? A, what's the, there's got to be a name for a Korean matchmaker. Yeah. For Korean, it's not great. It's Hun, right? And it's uh, – hold on. I actually pulled this up. Uh, Sun. Sun Bunungo, right? That's what you'd say. Sun Bunungo. The person is well, named Isn't there Chinese. like another name for like a Jewish um, matchmaker? I mean, there's all I, every, yeah. every, culture every culture has culture that has kind this. of thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's just Japanese call it Nakado, I think. Okay. Let me see. Uh, and then Chinese call it Chinese. What's Chinese? Uh, yeah. The Japanese is Nakado. Chinese is whatever. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of these terms. If yeah, you are yeah, interested yeah. in helping Greg build this app, Greg and me build this app, let us know. If you think it's a yeah. terrible idea, let us know. If you have any issues with anything we talked about about real estate, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. All right, man. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Ciao. Listen, content is everything. Two Brothers Creative makes it look easy. Right now, business owners really only have two options. The first option is hire a big firm. Now, this big firm's gonna come in, make you think that they invented all the algorithms and start charging you thousands of dollars every month. You don't wanna do that. Second option is to do it yourself. Well, that means you gotta learn SEO, SEM, copywriting, marketing techniques on the web. Ugh, you should be really focusing on your own product. But now there's a third option. It's called content in a box. Give Two Brothers Creative 30 minutes a week and they'll handle everything. Plus, they'll show you how to bring it in house later on. They'll rebuild your marketing foundation and give you tools and techniques and a new marketing playbook that'll actually produce real results and help you grow your business. Two Brothers Creative will give you the confidence and know-how to tell the SEOs and SEMs and all those other acronyms to get fucked. You're in control now. Get started today at thecontentbox.com. Thank you.